this holiday season. I could get used to a view like this. Feel the force of a horse. You're such a good boy. Get a hug from a thug. No, no, put me down. Spend some time with a mime. And watch the whole town turn upside down. Here. Maybe we should get you home. Call it a day. Nope. Oh, come on! Tangled. Rated PG in 3D November 24th. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cinemarque. This is the podcast about movies, video games, and the sparks that fly when those two worlds collide. My name is Steve Guntley, and who do we have joining us here today? Uh, hi. I am a roguish young man who is probably too old for the woman he's pursuing. Ooh, okay, all right. I, we're, that's we're, not true. We're that's throwing not, down that's me, like that. But yeah. We're throwing down gauntlets already. He's like 26 in the movie, no, 25. Oh, no, oh, I don't know. No, I think he's, he's like 23, 20s. maybe, yeah. tops. Mm. I'm sorry, some men can grow facial hair uh, at a I'm young age. I'm just saying. <laughs> he uh, basically, it's her birthday. Yeah, well, we'll yeah. we'll I we'll get, get into it. that. We'll let's finish there. introducing we'll people. Yeah, yes. uh, I am a dashing swords lady uh, <laughs> with incredibly long hair. Yeah, I mean, this is all actually pretty true. You're accurately describing yourself. Um, j Ben. <laughs> the movie we're talking about is wow. Disney's Tangled. Give me a second. I'm oh. building to it. <laughs> <laughs> the movie we're talking about is Disney's Tangled from 2010. Uh, this is a movie that features a beautiful young blonde woman with long hair. And so we needed some blonde representation on this episode. And so we are joined by special guest Ailish Collins. Welcome back, Ailish. Thank you for introducing me. I, I was going to call myself a horse. And <laughs> <laughs> you still have that option. <laughs> Nay. <laughs> Wait, are, are you refusing to introduce yourself as a horse or were you introducing yourself as a horse? <laughs> I don't think that picked up. <laughs> With a horse noise. Well, we are happy to have Ailish back on the show, usually uh, here and in the other room yelling facts at us. So uh, it's nice to have you actually on mic. We appreciate it. Or uh, texting facts to... Steve. Yeah, occasionally yeah. you're you're like the uh, you're the 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 man on the computer. You're the you're the Especially one feeding when it comes information. To marine animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know a lot about marine animals. I wonder why this whole thing takes place on land. It so. does. That is kind of a bummer. Yeah. I have to say. I'm yeah. out of my a little bit of water. There's some water. Yeah, yeah there's some water. But there's but... no aquatic creatures. That is true. Not really. Yeah. That is true. Um, but the movie today is Tangled. It was released November 29th, 2010. It's d directed by Nathan Greno and B Byron Howard, and it's written by Dan Fogelman. And it stars Mandy Moore, Zachary Levi, Donna Murphy, Ron Perlman, Brad Garrett, Jeffrey Tambor, and my favorite, Paul F. Tompkins. I uh, was so... When uh, in the second time we see the villains the yeah the, whatever you would call them the twins the yeah twins. the thugs uh he spoke and i'm like wait a minute it's that ron pearl it's it's old hellboy himself yeah very clearly absolutely i was very happy about that yeah D tangled is a pretty interesting movie if you are like a disney nerd i think this is kind of uh an interesting transitional movie that sort of helped usher them into this new renaissance that they've been in in the last like decade. I guess that's kind of slowing down to a degree uh, as well. I don't well. know if I'd call it renaissance. Maybe uh, surge in popularity. High Middle Ages. Yeah, yeah. High middle <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the introduction of a new dimension. Okay. Yeah. I'm, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So Martin Luther has handed like yeah the multiverse. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was I was talking. Um, Last night about this, about like, because like this does definitely, um, well, they try to marry Pixar storytelling with musicals. Yeah. And like, this is the first time that they really tried to do that. A couple of the leaders of Pixar were also leading on this and working yeah. with Alan Menken. And, um, and it's just like, it, it, you can see like both styles uh, yeah. sort of warring at each other in this movie. Uh, while later on, like say in Kanto, you really find that they, they hit the sweet spot of having the Pixar like storytelling along with like the real bops. Absolutely. I would argue 
this is kind of the point where Pixar and Disney started becoming a little interchangeable to mm -hmm. a degree because, you know, so if for, to put it in context, like think from like 2000 to like this movie in 2010, Pixar is kind of unstoppable. You know, it's 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 bop after bop. It's Finding Nemo. It's Monsters, Inc. It's The Incredibles. It's Ratatouille. It's Wally. -E, it's just nonstop hits for Pixar. And in the meantime, Disney, the proper like Disney studio is really struggling to find its feet. And a lot of that, this is an interesting thing that people don't really talk about enough in, in terms of Disney movies, but uh, a lot of it was they were failing because they were starting to target their movies to boys. Mm -hmm. And Disney has always succeeded more with young women than it has with young men. So we get movies like, uh, you know, and some of these are good movies to be clear, but they were financial struggles like like uh, uh, Emperor's New Groove, uh, Atlantis, mm. uh, Treasure Planet, Home on the Range. Man, they definitely targeted some of these towards uh, boys. Oh, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Brother Bear, you know, like Brother Bear kind of sucked. <laughs> But Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove is great. Atlantis I like Atlantis. Uh, Home on the Range is one of the worst Disney movies ever made. It's unwatchable. I haven't seen that one. Oh, we'll, we'll get to it. It's terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they were really trying and struggling to make this happen. They were also struggling with this um, toss-up between hand-drawn animation, like the classical Disney style that sort of made their bones back in the 80s and 90s, and this new CG-influenced animation that was starting to become more popular with Pixar and with DreamWorks, uh, especially with the Shrek movies, like, blowing up the way that they were. So they start kind of dipping their toes into that, and the first couple that they try are sort of unremarkable. It's like Chicken Little, uh, Meet the Robinsons, Bolt. It's, it's movies like that that don't really have much of a cultural tale so it's interesting to look at disney at this point and kind of wonder what's going on 2009 they decide okay our biggest brand has always been disney princesses so we need to stop kind of messing around trying to target the boy market and let's get back to princesses so they try the princess and the frog which does well is critically well liked I, I, like i i keep like I, I don't know why it has such a negative reputation for for being such a successful movie because it was yeah. actually quite successful. It was, and it was one of those things where, like, on paper, yeah, it made money, but Disney wanted it to be a bonanza, and it wasn't that. You know, it wasn't among their higher tier, like, most successful films. And so they kind of chalked that up as a failure. And so in the midst of all this... There's Tangled. Okay, so Tangled first came around. It was first started being pitched as a Rapunzel movie in 1996. It was by Glenn Keane, who was kind of one of the big, beloved animators of Disney at the time. He really wanted to do it, and he wanted to do a traditional hand-drawn animation. Uh, but So they kicked the story around for a little bit, and by 2001, Shrek came out. And Shrek was this massive, massive hit that was targeting both kind of younger people and older people. And so... The uh, CEO at Disney at the time, I think it was Eisner, he wanted this movie to be kind of totally restructured and become a little bit more of a winky, computer-animated, Shrek-style version of the Rapunzel tale. It was going to be called Rapunzel Unbraided. And so in 2003, they start working on that. Uh, they attach uh, Reese Witherspoon to star in this film as Rapunzel. Uh, Kristen Chenoweth was going to play the evil queen. Oh, that would be cool. That's kind of a fun, yeah, that's kind of a fun pairing. Uh, interestingly, Reese Witherspoon also attached to do the main voice in Brave, another like kind of Disney princess movie. Uh, and in both times, she got replaced kind of at the last minute. Although in in this case, it wasn't because she couldn't do a Scottish accent. <laughs> um, I think the the tone of the story just kind of changed. So by 2006 or seven, they basically they're looking at the movie that they have. They've renamed it Rapunzel, and they kind of decide that they don't want to go the Shrek route anymore because the Shrek phenomenon sort of hit and left in that six year period that they were developing it but it never left our hearts it never left our hearts it continues to Trek impregnate sonic the shrek hedgehog is to this day excuse me <laughs> have you not seen those crazy fan arts like uh no. shrek and sonic the hedgehog have a baby and it's batman yeah it's what batman? or maybe it's the other way around shrek and batman have a baby and it's is sonic the hedgehog some interesting tumblr or rabbit holes that you've been down am yeah. i just revealing of what i what i look at your brother history yeah. like, i think so shrek and batman make more sense as a couple and sonic is a baby i don't know shrek and batman don't make sense as a couple but, hmm. batman is the baby that uh, that i agree batman okay. is the baby doesn't if batman is the baby that means both of them are doomed to die that's yeah true. yeah that's yeah. true oh man that's a dark yeah that's a dark little tumblr that we're talking about 
I'm, I'm glad you <laughs> sneak up on Shrek in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Get we went down the alley. rabbit hole. Oh yeah. <laughs> of, of, of oh, weird, which one is the more appropriate <laughs> baby and who goes better with Shrek <laughs> weird deviant art that my friends used to like send Batman, me to gross me out I feel like Batman would raise Shrek really well he has a good job of raising I mean like a complicated job of raising orphans I don't know he's emotionally distant and you know no, that's why I said complicated yeah I think he'd raise Shrek to be the badass that Shrek is oh well uh, sure. but he would be emotionally stunted therefore Batman would be the parent of Shrek yeah that, yeah we had not discussed Shrek as the baby <laughs> yeah that's true yeah that that could be the third variable the most and that's the one that unlocks this whole thing <laughs> <laughs> it finally clicks into place we all understand so, it so, so tangled. Sonic and <laughs> Batman. <laughs> then yes. Okay. I don't, feel like, I don't think they're a good maybe couple. Knuckles, yeah. Yeah, maybe Knuckles. Yeah. Maybe Knuckles. Maybe Knuckles. Well, yeah. that's because Batman's a fuck boy. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And Knuckles a isn't. Fan. Come on. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get this back on track somehow. All right, so 2007, they basically decide to scrap the whole sort of like edgy Rapunzel that they were going for, and they decide to go back to like a traditional kind of uh, uh, earnest Disney movie. Uh, but this means this is like the third time that they've restarted this movie. So at this point, the budget for this movie has ballooned to be about $300 million. <laughs> that makes it far and away the most expensive animated film ever made. One of the most expensive. I, I had mistakenly thought it was the most expensive film ever made. It still falls behind like most of the Star Wars Avatar. and Marvels and things like I think that. Avatar is the most, Avatar's up Avatar there. Avatar is the most expensive movie ever made. It's, that one's up there for yeah. sure, yeah. Um, but Tangled is in the conversation and it's definitely in terms of animation animation the most expensive film ever made um and so in I a, like like i i understand like but i feel like it's it's sort of like a bad way to like quantify how much a movie costs is like if it takes 20 years in development i think but, the the reason that gets lumped in is just because they had movies in production they had like almost completed movies in yeah. production that they just sort of started over with. And that's something that Pixar used to do a lot. And that's yeah. something that Disney started doing too. It's just like, all right, yeah, this isn't working. Let's just redo it. Uh, so they recast the roles. They wanted more musical people to be involved. So they cast Mandy Moore as Rapunzel and Zachary Levi, who uh, I think people really, really knew him from that show Chuck at this time, but he was also like a big Broadway star. Yeah, he's uh, dreamy. Yeah. He's a dreamy guy. He's a dream boat. And I, I always uh, wanted him let's to play. Clear. Is, is he dreamy or is he just tall? No, he's dreamy. Okay, all right. He's and dreamy. tall. He's yeah. funny yeah. and charming and like handsome and tall and got a luscious head of hair. Yeah. Uh, but more than anything, he's actually funny. And I feel like this is like one of the things that I, I've always wanted him to be in a superhero role. So I was really happy when he got um, cast in the first Shazam. Um, I never saw the second oh, one. Yeah, right. me too. I it's hear it's kind of so, bad. I I think that first one so is so many characters. That first one's really underrated yeah. and like kind of underseen. I think it's a very charming. It's like if oh. Big was a superhero, and that's that's a really fun idea. And I, I like that movie a lot, I but just, I never bothered with two. The only reason why I uh, am familiar with Zachary Levi is because he hosted the Video Game Awards one year. Oh, did he? Okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. So you're not a marvelous <laughs> Mrs. Maisel fan, I take it? Yeah, no. He was on that for a bit. I feel like Chuck would be up your alley yeah you'd like chuck i, I yeah I, f I don't remember which one that is it's about chuck. a tech nerd who becomes a super spy yeah yes. and considering oh. you're directing a super spy show maybe. yeah that and yeah. i'm a tech nerd and, and you're, you're a tech, tech nerd, nerd. that's an it yeah. that would be like right up your alley yeah or but, would i just be angry at all the things that are wrong he no, could be i don't know <laughs> he, he works at like a best buy in that show so oh, like he, okay. he doesn't need to be super top but yeah uh this movie they renamed it to just rapunzel this is kind of the controversial title i never really thought about this in terms of like why they changed the title from rapunzel which is a recognizable fairy tale character that does not a more complicated name than like ratatouille or anything like that so i was like why did they change this to tangled and i realized it's because they wanted this to be more of a two-hander. They wanted a character that was going to appeal to girls, and they wanted a character that was going to appeal to boys. And that's why Flynn Rider was brought in and basically is the co-lead of this. And so yeah. they are entangled to a degree. And I think that apparently that was kind of a controversial he decision the at the time. Like, a lot of the choices that this movie made were scrutinized a little bit for 
maybe making a Disney princess movie, they were trying to pander a little bit too much to boys. I think the idea was more that it's a movie that should appeal to everybody, but I understand a little bit about where the complaints come from. I don't know. I I feel like um, this is like one of the issues with like Princess and the Frog is like having um, uh, sometimes having a a sidekick or like like they need to be sidekicky. Flynn Rider is definitely not sidekicky. No. Um, And um, he definitely takes a lot of the focus away from Rapunzel. He does. And I feel like that let Rapunzel's character be underdeveloped uh, in this film, especially. I agree. Like, um, and she's so like, I get that she lives in a tower and she's supposed to be naive, but they may portray her as so stupid. Yeah. This is like, I like this movie, but she's clearly the stupidest Disney princess. I, I definitely want to go into this because the the success of this movie yeah i mean this movie came out and it it was it, it was very expensive but it was a big hit it was the eighth highest grossing movie of its year and it was very well liked and that was 2010 2010 okay and so and it, it ushered in this kind of new era for disney where they get to kind of have their cake and eat it too they get to do the cgi animation and try and do things more in the pixar realm but they also get to go back to their disney princess catalog which, of course, leads us in 2013 to the massive success of Frozen, which kind of upended Frozen everything. hit the spot. Frozen yes. is such a, like, filled with bops, filled with character, filled with uh, ennui. I, and this, this is where I'm coming from. This is the same issue. Like, so I, I've always liked Tangled. I think Tangled is a good movie, and I've never loved it. And I have a lot of friends who really advocate for this as like the best Disney princess movie or the what? best Disney movie the recently. Best? And I'm like, no, I can't really get on board with that, especially if you compare it with Frozen and see how much agency and independence and kind of character that those two women have in that yeah. movie. And you compare it to Rapunzel, who really is kind of a question mark, right? Am I am I off yeah. base in that? I mean, you literally told me that last night. I did. Yeah. Yes. I was reading in bed, and you came, and you were like. I think I figured out the problem with Tangled. Yes. It's that I, she's underdeveloped. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, she was asleep, by the way. I woke her up. Wake up! <laughs> Wake up! I figured out the problem with Tangled! Yeah. I solved it! Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, there's a lot I like about it. It, it does feel very, like, classically 90s in its songwriting. Like you said, Alan Menken brought in to do, like, the songs on this, you know, and it feels uh, very much like... Who a, did the soundtrack? That's, uh, um, well, Alan Menken is the same guy who did, uh, like, and, Lion King. And, uh, like, he's a composer. They had a different guy do the lyrics, uh, okay. Glenn something or other. Um, but then you have, if you compare it to the music in, again, we're going to compare it to Frozen a lot, but, like, compare it to the songs in Frozen, which do feel a yes. little more modern, you know? Like, the the songs in this still feel like a little bit of a 90s throwback, like which were, like, a 50s Broadway like throwback. the ones are... Uh, they're also more Broadway. Like the Frozen songs yes. um, are like the Do You Want to Build a Snowman is a whole song about the emotion of being rejected by your yeah. sister. It's such a – oh, so good. Okay, we shouldn't in talk about Frozen. The, oh, yeah, Frozen yeah. Episode, the songs but, in Rapunzel don't – or Entangled don't do that. The only one that does is Mother Knows Best. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's um, – the best thing about this movie is the villain um, because uh, she's played by Donna Murphy, who's another Broadway legend, you know, and she comes in, and it, this is a really unique villain for the Disney canon in a lot of ways because she is – emotionally manipulative and emotionally abusive in a way you don't really see Mm -hmm. in kids films like this yeah like really blatantly and like you could see it and like feel a little triggered by it like if you if you grew up in any kind of that environment you know the the casual jabs about her weight like the constantly undermining her the love bombing to like keep her in place you know all of that is so effective uh the gaslighting too yeah and then the the points where she is actively ignoring Rapunzel and her thought, like her emotions and stuff, to serve her own purpose to try to maybe deviate away from it to yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, no, I absolutely watched that and I was like, I don't, I don't like her. And it's it's a nice update to a classical trope because the the classical like. Uh, vain witch who doesn't want to lose her youth and beauty is a fairy tale staple for a million years. You know, it's from the original story. And uh, I like that they're able to update that and see the way that a person like that would project onto their daughter or onto like their figure that they're and raising. They definitely did a good job of making her 
less likable. Yeah. Like, you know, she's clearly a bad person. Yeah. There's no question about it. She, the moment that she grabs the knife, you're like, oh, okay. That's yeah. where this is going. She has a dagger and is now going to get her. Yeah. Um, I also feel like she's a, a bit more complicated villain than a lot of, like, one of the things that makes Dizzy successful are its villains. Yeah. And definitely when the villains have multi- dimensional capabilities <laughs> multi-dimensional mm. capabilities like Doctor Strange <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are they are they have a They're whole extra 40, dimension actually. yeah um, when they have like and it definitely feel, it feels like Gothel does love Rapunzel but she's a terrible person yeah uh, and so sometimes when a terrible person loves somebody they like they still love them they're just terrible um, i mean it's so telling like that their their little ritual is like i love you i love you more i love you most yeah it's a it's a yeah. it's a outdoing you it's it's reinforcing that i'm the one who loves you most no one can love you this much it's br- it's pretty brutal uh, like watching it as yeah. i was oh, yeah, watching definitely. it there were so many times where i was like if anybody ever says that that's a red flag if anybody <laughs> says that that's a red flag yeah oh, this, wow. this is a we good like a indicator. Red flags. yeah if you're if you're recognizing any of your own relationship in this in this relationship <laughs> then uh that's that's a good red flag to put up and that's a you know uh all right so this is a big blonde representation movie i think i think this is big uh big in the blonde you turn community. to the do one you, blonde. do you talk about this in your blonde circles alish your your my secret message boards multiple, yeah my, my blonde club <laughs> yes um we don't really because here's the thing yeah she's too smart Oh, I so see. So you're resentful identify. of her. But oh. we do identify with the part where her hair gets cut and turns brown and she loses her magic. <laughs> this is... She thinks she loses her magic. She loses her magic. Oh, okay. She yeah. just, like, the last she little bit of it, it comes out. She only had it when she was hot and blonde. No, no, she still... <laughs> so, uh, it, it's an interesting historical fact that King's tears were thought to be magical for a really long time. That's why um, Aragon in um, Lord of the Rings has the ability to heal people by crying on them, uh, mm. which is a cut out. I think it's in the extended version, uh, but not in. I don't know if it's in the extended. I think it's the extended version of Return of the King. That doesn't sound uh, familiar. But, but yeah, I trust. But yeah, that's that. a that's a uh, that's a classic. Um, like royal tears heal people. Yeah, uh, that's a deep cut uh, from folklore. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you're welcome. We, I appreciate should, that. I did not know that at we all. We should take all the royals and make them cry. Yeah, yeah, I think we should. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's what's happening to a lot of them right now. Apparently, they're all disappearing or like getting sick. It's I don't weird. know. Let's not wait into that. Yeah. It's like I don't know. Like I thought it was just like it was. I don't know. The whole thing with Kate Middleton is so shady. Yeah. Like putting out like a a, a doctored photo and then yeah, being like, that's oh, a... it was her idea to doctor the photo. I'm like, come off of it. It's not her weird. idea. You have Kensington Palace, and if you have Kensington Palace, couldn't you just make a photo that like. Do you think they'd have better Photoshop operators there? Yeah, but either way. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, that that element of it always struck me a little weird. Like, like her hair is magical and like sentient when it's blonde, and then when is she her cuts hair her hair, sentient? her hair's not Would sentient. We it it kind of snakes around. She can command it. She can tie people up with it without like know. using her no, hands. She just it's her hands. Yeah. No, no, she. She gets Pascal at the beginning with the the wisp of her the end of her yeah, hair. Yeah, but she's yeah, like no. whipping him with yeah. the hair. It's like she's all the way back holding on to the hair. What it is? Much she, further down. It is her snaking hair around. Is not magical. Her, she has really good. Wait, she's really dexterous. She's really right. used to her using hair her hair. Is magical and okay. she does have control over it, yes. but it's not sentient. Yes. Okay, it's prehensile though. Yeah. She yeah. can she can like pick no, stuff up with it. She uses it like a rope, and it's it's more of like. An animation thing in that case, yeah. and I think it is an a superpower. Of her yeah, being and I feel like she is just as good with her hair as Indiana Jones is with his uh, whip. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and and hers is better conditioned than his whip too. <laughs> and it's yeah, more versatile. More versatile. Looks less like a yeah. snake. Yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, the, the hair animation is great. I actually really like that. Hair is difficult to animate uh, in any medium, and they need to do yeah. a lot with it, and it needs to kind of be its own character. And I think they do a great job with that. That that's but, one thing that I want to 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 talk about too. Is uh, it looks great? Uh, oh, it looks like gorgeous. Like the first time she lowers down, and you get the downward look of all the grass and everything. 
so many blades of grass and yeah. the, the environments look pretty good. So it's always I always go back and forth because I am one of the holdouts. I do love 2D animation. Me too. And I have to say that this movie looked really good for being 3D. I don't know if you've gone back to watch Shrek. That's kind of rough. Yeah. Um, like, uh, But Tangle is completely like there's a little stiffness in some of the facial animations. Uh, but otherwise it's completely... Uh, watchable and pretty and like uh, you completely delve into the world of this animation and it and it's lovely um i don't think it's as cool and unique as 2d animation no um i, I feel like it's a little generic there's only a couple of things that i feel like stand out like the animation of the the sun symbol yeah. um but um <laughs> i think that so i'm gonna jump tracks as though I'm using my hair as a whip yeah uh, hey, and I'm gonna say uh, one of the things that I so I like this movie but I'm going to, but th- there are things that I don't like about the movie and yeah. so one of the things is like I feel like there's a lot of plot holes in this movie that aren't existent in a lot of other Disney movies interesting um uh, like for example, like the fact that Maximus can rescue Flynn from the scaffold uh, by going to the Snuggly Duckling, and, oh, and like, yeah. how did Maximus do that? How did he do that? Maximus can't talk, and Maximus is a police horse. There's no way those outlaws would believe a police horse. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> I I like the whole bit with the horse. I like that the horse is kind of an antagonist for a lot of the movie, and then they became. Did we need the chameleon? The I'm just horse. gonna throw it out there. Do we need? I, I know it's just Disney practice to throw in adorable animal sidekicks so you can make plushies out of them, but did we need this chameleon? He doesn't really add anything for me. I don't I know. Feel like Am I being overly mean? It, it gives her a reason to not be insane. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah, I think I think that's true. I think if she didn't have a pet, she would be bonkers. Because the the pinnacle of sanity is a young woman sitting in a tower alone talking to a lizard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was there for seventeen years, and then what, three hundred and sixty four days? Yeah, so, something like that. Uh, I would have lost my mind if I didn't have. I would have made things to talk to. Yeah, which would there be would, way worse than talking. There'd be to, a Wilson the volleyball instead. Yeah, of there would be. Yeah, yeah, there'd be like four of them. Yeah, I mean, I don't want. To, I'm, I'm glad the movie doesn't dig too deep into what kind of trauma this would be like for a young woman to grow up like this. But to your point earlier, it, like the the issue that I think is just kind of hanging over this whole movie is that Rapunzel as a character just doesn't really pop you know she just doesn't really ha- she doesn't really have much agency See, I think she pops at the beginning but she dives off as Flynn becomes sort of the paramount um, importance yeah. uh, character uh, um, these these roguish types are a lot of fun on film and I think Flynn is a lot of fun but like he does kind of eat up a lot of the oxygen in this movie well and I think it's interesting because like going back to Maximus I loved Maximus yeah. and uh, the person I was watching with was just like hey what if Maximus was a person trapped in a horse's body and I was like yeah but then she, he'd deserve um uh um Rapunzel, not um, not Flynn. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flynn does a lot of growing, and that, I think he that's does. why we lose Rapunzel is because they instead start focusing on his character development. Well, and it's like yeah. her I want song is I want to see some sprinkly lights instead of I want to get out of the tower. You know, I I don't know whether or yeah. not that that this is like I want to leave. Yeah. Like instead of having that really strong want, it she's like I want to see the sparkly and lights. It could be that they were trying to put something along the lines of like she feels destined to be like she's being drawn oh yeah but i I don't feel like it works because i think it it makes an 18 year old seem like a like a little stupid yeah Yeah, she and especially like they establish that she spends pretty much every day like reading and doing the arts and like like she's doing things to enrich herself but like and, and it's a delicate act to play because she needs to be naive without being an idiot you know and she but ultimately she just feels too kind of obsequious she just sort of follows everybody around she's super optimistic and pleasant and like accommodating in a lot of ways and it's i don't know and i don't want to i don't like picking on performances either but like I think Mandy Moore just feels a little lightweight for this. Um, she, I don't know. I, she's I, just I very don't have breathy. a problem with Mandy Moore's uh, performance. I feel like Mandy Moore really brought uh, the character to life in a lot of ways and did a lot of the heavy lifting that the script was sort of neglecting. Mm. Uh, but I can see your point uh, because like, she definitely has this 
sort of airy quality to her voice. Um, that Especially in her singing. Like, there's just, her, her singing is always, like, technically perfect yeah. and very pretty, but, like, it, there's no... Th- there's no character she's in it. She's a you modern know? singer. Yeah. Like, there's no like, uh, like when you go to uh, Frozen and you have now I'm, I've always pronounced her name correctly, and now I'm gonna do uh, a John Travolta and probably pronounce it incorrectly. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> damn it, I can't do it. You just want to say Menzel. Adina. Menzel. I'm just Adina. yeah. That's all. I, yeah. Adina, Adina Menzel. Menzel. Adina Menzel. Um, and um, she has such gravitas, and so does like. Uh, like someone like Christo Chenoweth from uh, um, uh, Wicked, Wicked. And, yeah. and uh, there's just such gravitas. But those uh, are like Broadway ladies who you believe have seen someone die in a knife fight. <laughs> you know, that's what I want for Mandy <laughs> Moore. <laughs> She's from Oklahoma. Okay, they are get there a lot of knife fights. Yeah, there are a lot of knife fights in Oklahoma. Yeah. The state flag of Oklahoma is a guy getting stabbed with a knife. See, I didn't get that. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. <laughs> Hey, Judd actually Judd dies. Has he the falls, he on, falls on a knife. I've seen it once and I was really bored. Literally a, character, <laughs> literally a character dies in Oklahoma from getting stabbed in a knife fight. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> so, yeah, no, but I mean, look, it's, it's again, it's supposed to be a very young, innocent lady. And like, I understand where they're coming from. And they're also throwing back to the early yeah. 90s when, you know, these Disney princess characters were who were similarly, I would argue, kind of thinly drawn and obsequious. We, yeah. yeah, we've 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 fought deadly on this. I think yeah. Belle is the worst case right there, but sure. I think the other ones, no, they have personality. You I know. love Belle because I was a, I read books as a child. Yeah. So like <laughs> I really identified with Belle. Yeah. Uh, and the beast is hot. No. Uh, no, there we go. So it's okay he's that he's got, Stockholm like, a syndromes Hood her. Thing going yeah. On. yeah. He becomes no, but... less hot as a human. Wait, does he wear pants? Yeah. Yeah, he wears pants. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I only associate Robin Hood. Like, I my theory is that so many women were attracted to that anime Robin Hood just because he didn't wear pants. Have you ever seen uh, 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 Bet La Belle? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, so uh, the interesting Renoir, how yeah. much Disney ripped off from that movie. <laughs> that movie's insane. Yeah, that movie is wild. But in that so cool. in that movie in that very, the classic French movie, it's black and white, and it's a it's classic of cinema. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely watch it. Absolutely. Uh, Gaston character and the Beast character are played by the same actor. Yeah. So it has this really interesting dimension of like two men being both her savior and her tormentor. Yeah. Like it has these really interesting connotations, and when it comes back to Tangled, I feel like the the mother daughter angle is like really where I feel like they could have um, doubled down on the like double down on it. Like I would have personally liked Gothel to stay alive. Like I I, I think it would I mean have it's ambiguous. Thing. Yeah, we don't no, know. No, that no, she she's died. super dead. She evaporated into nothing. Uh, but anyway, back to things that I loved about this movie. I love Maximus. Yeah, I he's adorable. He's so so. It's so easy to get these sort of sidekick side characters animal characters wrong yeah uh and i would argue that uh, i feel like moana the chicken is the most annoying part of moana um, he's just like an obstacle yeah, yeah yeah uh and you're just worried that he's gonna die on the open ocean all the time they uh, they yeah they, yeah they made the error of making him too stupid to be endearing like yeah. because he just has no self-preservation uh but uh, maximus does feel like a a, a new spin on the animal side. I don't know. He's always trend. horsing around. Oh, he, oh zing, zing, zing. Zing, zing, zing. Um, and what do we think of the songs in this movie? Like, I, they, they've they kind of slowly endeared themselves to me. I, I they, None of these really made an impression the first time I watched them. But the now first, I'm starting to kind of The mother song made on. an impression. I, but I, I'm very, I have a whole playlist of villain songs. Mm-hmm. I, and I, it's such a good villain song. Uh, the initial song uh, towards the end, and uh, what's it called? See, this is the thing. It's like it, like I enjoy it, but I don't remember the lyrics. The light, like the the falling in love song in the boat. Oh, the uh, I see the light or yeah, whatever. I see the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it, it's and fine. I liked it definitely more last night when I was watching it. But it definitely, it's it's not like a sha la 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 do do do. Yeah, it's going for more of a uh, a whole new world kind of vibe, which again just feels a little outdated. But again, it's not it's, a whole new world. Like you, yeah. like, those those. Songs, I remember. Yeah, those, yeah, ones yeah, are, yeah. those ones are burned into your memory. Forever, yeah. I yeah. haven't even seen that was Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't yeah. even seen proper Aladdin before, and I knew. Wow. Yeah. I always make references to that. You gotta though. watch Aladdin. The only yeah. Aladdin I've seen oh, is the live action one. Oh, that's uh, a bad one to you gotta see. Watch. <laughs> I don't know. I would go. I don't know if I have to- Stockholm Syndrome regarding the live action Aladdin. Because I watched it three times because I was. Really? Vis- well, I was like. 
you know when you're traveling and you need to watch something with family members and you're like and you're watching and you're like my like something that you know, the the cross platforms i'm like i can watch aladdin with my mom i can watch aladdin with my brother yeah i, <laughs> I, I never attempted the live action one because i hate those live action remakes and I, I hate guy Ritchie, you know so it's like it's a double dose of things i'm not i hate like. them but i think uh, like uh, will smith wasn't as bad as i thought he would be well, sure. uh, he was definitely charming and very good as the genie he's not robin williams no. but i think the biggest thing is that they uh sort of cut down on the menace of jafar oh jafar, yeah. first of all yeah. like jafar plays like a very similarly aged he's not he's they they aged him real really down yeah um and they sort of got rid of a lot of his menace uh because and like his like he like the guy who plays him is very hot but he's done not like jafar hot if you know what i mean uh, yeah i mean we're we're gonna go into all <laughs> yeah okay let's clarify hot? what Jaf. <laughs> i think we're learning a lot I, I don't about go too, i don't want to go too off track because we are gonna have an aladdin episode someday but i need to dig into what jafar hot I means mean, look, okay the scene with jasmine in the red get up yeah kind of hot Sure. <laughs> I, I guess I'm on board. Wait, Jafar in the in, this, in that scene yeah, or that, Jasmine that in that scene? Because Jasmine in that scene, I'm with you. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. The whole sequence. There. Jafar is attractive, but disgusting. He so, always put off pedophile vibes to me. No, he's not no. a pedophile. Yes. No, no, oh, no, come on. He's no, like this creepy, no. like older man in he power. He's all no. gaunt and spindly, and he's, he's got the. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. He's not. It's not pedophile. He wants Jasmine. So he can be the soul. Yeah, he's okay. not actually yeah. into Jasmine. I, I would say he's more like he's got this weird flirtation with Aladdin yes. more than anything. Maybe, yeah. maybe. All right, we'll, we'll we'll table that for now. We're gonna get <laughs> well, back to that. And I will also say Scar is also hot. That one. I well, get. that's Jer- that's Jeremy Irons. You know, that's that's there's a lot coming through in the voice on that one. Tangled. Um, I think we kind of covered I, the movie I, here. I, I think we should talk a little bit more about the movie, and I think that I, I want to hear what people like about this movie because yeah. it was. A success um, and it is good and I, I like, like it. it and I just like there are a lot of things to like and sometimes I feel like as a, a person as a podcaster I sometimes get dragged down into the things that I'm like nitpicky about yeah yeah instead of the things that I love to celebrate and like and I really do like Zachary Levy um, being Flynn Rider I think it's a really fun turn he's very charming um, I love the the mother like uh, the mother character she's so deep yeah and i feel like it's a really interesting thing uh to because like these are children's stories and like you're trying to warn children of about the future in all these stories because that's a classic sort of folklore stance and like nowadays we're trying to uh, like uh do like hey you're maybe your mother is a bad person hey maybe yeah. don't marry the person that you've known for five minutes yeah you know like and so it's interesting to see the new disney villains and how there are warnings for the the youth yeah, no, I, I, there, there really is a lot to like about it. It's an important movie for what it sort of set the table for, for like the next 10 years of Disney, which was just sort of unprecedented success. Even even beyond the princess element of the Frozen movies, like you had the Wreck-It Ralph, you had uh, Zootopia, Big Hero 6, all these movies were really Wreck-It good. I have seen Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, Wreck-It Ralph is great. I've heard really good things about it. I like it. that movie a lot. I like I both of those. It, yeah, yeah, on the bus in a field trip. Nice, yeah. In the bus on a field trip. Yeah, yeah in the bus. Um, yeah. Frozen was a movie that I had hadn't seen for a very long time, and then I was like, "Oh, it's a it's a kids movie." And then my roommates were watching it, and I sat down, and I'm like, "All right, this is a good it's movie. good. This no, is it's a, this is a good movie." And then we watched the second one, and I was like, "All right, well, I think we've all cried now." Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's an interesting movie, and it it is important for the whole like kind of Disney pantheon. Yeah, I think. but yeah. like the it's a good movie but it doesn't hit as hard yeah. yeah i think it's a good movie but it's not it's not spectacular yes. like no and i feel like that it's hard to hold up like a movie that would just be fantastic uh when you hold it up to the pantheon of disney yeah yeah and you know the, a lot of this could just be the troubled production and like i didn't even mention that the original director had a heart attack while oh. he was making it oh. and he had to step away to go recover and so they brought in two new directors like a, a year before the movie came out so like they 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 went through a lot to get this movie out and so like when frozen came out it felt a little bit more successful at merging the old and the new than this one does and when this one feels more like a throwback with kind of like hints at sort of what could be done i've always been 
fascinated. So uh, when I, I worked at the Disney store as a Christmas temp. Oh, did you? Oh, Scotland. my God. And first of all, it was really fun. Okay. Like it was like it was crazy because they were working at Christmas time at a Disney store. Oh, yeah. Um, but it was really like, first of all, the thing that I really recommend most about the Disney store experience is the fact that they play Disney songs, but it's like a two hour long CD. So you don't get like it's not just four songs. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I feel like it being a two hour long CD isn't enough if you work there. It, it was fine because like you only heard like this, like one song four times a day. It wasn't so bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, if right. you, yeah. I, well, I'm just saying I was grateful because those songs are catchy as fuck. Oh, yeah. Um, no. oh, way better than what I listened to at Kroger for three years. So. <laughs> I get it. Uh, but it was really interesting because I've always been fascinated and I wish uh, like I, I know I, I do a lot of like wishing that there was a box office for video games, but I wish there was a box office is for um for toys yeah i'm super curious because i feel like one of the reasons why um like tangled uh didn't like survive that much as a as a legacy was the fact that they're they're, they're, they didn't have as many toy options yeah Uh, that really is such a big part of the picture for so many of these movies yeah because like you're not you're not doing a lot when you're like like no one's coming and asking for it. like maybe one person an entire season will be like hey can I get a Rapunzel? I uh, mean it did well, but then yeah again I I keep comparing it to Frozen, but Frozen was such a bonanza oh with God. merchandising and with like the songs and it with everything. Still is. It still is. It yeah. still is. Like you will watch like if you go like uh, for a walk on a um, on a Saturday afternoon, you'll see a little girl in a in an Elsa costume. Yeah. No, you definitely will. Well, let's let's move on and talk about the game a little bit. Um, so, Tangled, the video game, it came out around the same time as this movie did in 2010. It's developed by Planet Moon Studios and it's published by Disney Interactive. It was released on the Wii, the DS, and on Windows. So, uh, Planet Moon Studios, I'd never really heard of them before, but they were an offshoot of Shiny Entertainment. If you know them, they were the people who made like Earthworm Jim games like that, uh, and they are actually responsible for two genuine like cult video game weirdo like offshoots one of them is called giants citizen kabuto which is like a very weird game where you play as a giant and then the other is called armed and dangerous and i don't know if any people may not be familiar with that name but they might have seen the image of the gun that shoots sharks (laughs) Uh, that's where that comes from is armed and armed and dangerous is really fun arm that shoots sharks you say it's It's cool it shoots like a vortex into the ground and then a gigantic shark jumps out it's called armed and dangerous it was released on the original xbox i believe it's like a multiplayer shooter that sort of made its uh was it based off of armed and dangerous the john candy movie it was not no not at all not at all no not in the least are we gonna have an episode on this one no 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 i wish but yeah this game's genuinely strange and uh, a lot of fun actually it's a multiplayer shooter where you just have ridiculously outlandish weapons and uh that's always kind of a fun concept but this tangled game would prove to be their very last game they were bought and then dissolved like immediately after this Who bought them? uh i don't remember it's a company called like bitpoint or something it's like a data oh. mining thing i don't even know what they did but they they bought them they used took their assets and then they shut down the studio so a bit of a shame um we played this game on steam but it was very clearly designed for the wii like it's got the low res wii graphics and even the button mapping on the screen when we were playing this was like coming up with like the wii button icons. so we were playing it two player where one player was using the keyboard one was using an xbox controller and the keyboard controls were showing up normally but the xbox controller controls were showing up as the wii controller yeah um, and this is a co-op like platformer game, which is a fun idea. You know, one person plays Flynn, one person plays Rapunzel. I love co-op games. I do too. Yeah, like, I'm we, such we play- a sucker. I feel like they're under like utilized by society. <laughs> Absolutely. Like- Ailish and I play a lot of them. Like whenever we can find a good one, like we'll we'll play through it. Highly recommend. Um, it takes two and uh, a way out, both by the same developer, yeah. and they were designed from the ground up to be a co-op experience with each player I've, doing different I've things. I only played a way out, but it was a great time. Yeah, it takes yeah. Two so. is a little bit better. It's okay. it's better, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely it. Yeah. So we love a good co-op game. 
Um, and I, I think generally this game is pretty solid, but I do want to discuss some of the weird sort of gender politics that are happening <laughs> in this game. If, if there was, if, if some of these issues were kind of hinted at in the movie, but I think the game really exacerbates a lot of these issues here. All right. So you play as either Flynn or Rapunzel and each of them get their own like sort of special abilities. Flynn has a dagger and he can cut through thorns. He can climb walls. Uh, uh, he can dig for treasure and he can break heavy objects. Rapunzel uh, uses her frying pan, which, again, it's from the movie, but there is some imagery there. I'm just like, all right, you, you use kitchen utensil. So can she actually break anything? Um, she, can, she can break through the thorns, I no. think. No, no, she, oh, can't. no she, she can't. Well, and it's interesting. I, we didn't play it single player, but I'm guessing that they would have had to let her break through things if it was single player. Yeah. Because, or, like, otherwise you can't get up. I don't know. You have to swap. With oh. Oh, maybe, nice. yeah. 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 Yeah, but she, you know, obviously she has her very long hair that like trails behind her and she uses that to gather sunlight from flowers. Yeah. The and worst animated hair. <laughs> like, yes. So bad. Yeah, this game looks pretty rough. If you really, if you haven't looked at a Wii game in a while, especially looking at it on Steam where, you know, games are usually up res and like look pretty good. This is fuzzy. It's out of focus. It's got a lot, like, a lot of low res imagery and her hair just looks like this... It looks like somebody's playing a game of like snake on their cell phone behind her all the time. Yeah. And yeah, we were experiencing some real graphical <laughs> hiccups in the cutscenes in particular. Some like, of the trees would just start doing flips. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Ghost trees. The, yeah. The lighting on Rapunzel would just kind of fade in and out between her being in complete shadow and her being in complete daylight. Yeah. While standing in complete daylight yeah it was just like flashing back and forth I don't, I don't think we had too much problem in the game with those no. graphical images but the cutscenes yeah. looked that honestly, way honestly the gameplay was pretty smooth it was but um, but yeah we just need to examine that a little bit why is rapunzel's sole ability to gather sunlight from flowers to keep her hair shiny <laughs> while flynn is running around doing all the dirty work here like what are we what are we trying to say here like are you giving this game to your kids hoping that like a boy sibling and the girl sibling are playing these roles what's going on here rapunzel really does not contribute anything within the gameplay as far as i noticed like she can ha have her hair grappling hook but that's just to go make more flowers grow <laughs> uh, she can hit people with frying pans i was enjoying that part and well, she can but when you get to the guards the first time it says flynn rider can protect rapunzel yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but and like a lot of her like utility is coming from getting up on higher ledges like and letting a man climb her hair which looks so painful yes. like yeah even if she's gripping it like and kind of cutting it off from pulling out her Roots, you can, it looks painful. You can use her hair to swing uh, at specific points, and then almost every time it's either A, just here's some flowers, go collect them, and then drop back down, or B, go walk over here, and there's the part where you can let uh, let Flint up. And I mean, all, all of this I was kind of getting into. Like, it's all very shaggy, it's pretty simple and like laid back, and you are just sort of walking around. It was scratching a similar itch to me as the Lego games, mm -hmm. which, I, know, yeah. which yeah. I love, because it's just sort of like, switch your brain off. Uh, yeah, I, I was enjoying it in that kind of like, passive gaming sort of like, there's no real threat or tension in this game. It is obviously intended for very young audiences, and it yeah. has that. Uh, level. Justin jumped off a cliff to see what would happen. <laughs> I uh, did. I did. What happened? Uh, you just reappear back on the land. Oh, sure. Just like in real life. Yeah. 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 Easy. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it has that kind of like calming quality that the Lego games have when they're at their best. And so I appreciated that. But just some of those dynamics were really standing out to me. Like yeah, Rapunzel yes. just does seem way underpowered compared to like the more traditional like just sword brute you know and also that's not Flynn's characterization in the movie like he is mm. not like a sword wielding badass he can handle himself in a fight if he has to but like in fact he's a fancy boy who talks his way out of situations the the one time that he ever really fights he's fighting with a frying pan yeah because he doesn't have a weapon yeah exactly like that's that's more the zone that he's in and that makes him likable we do need to talk about the painting aspect. <laughs> oh my God. How could I forget the painting aspect of this the game? Best please, part. please. Yeah, tell us about it. So, this was also clearly meant for the Wiimote. Yes. But you get to paint over the, uh, the posters of Flynn Rider. Mm -hmm. uh, but you only start out with like three colors and you have to unlock more as you go. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's a weird mechanic. Like, it's like we're going to give you this whole paintbrush and this easel and everything, and you're, you can paint in, like, white, green, and yellow and, <laughs> and, and until until you search for all the goo around the world. Also, they're, like, mildly transparent, so you're not accomplishing anything. You can still fully see Flynn Rider under the paint. Uh, oh, yeah. And also, we got two new colors, but never did we find – we didn't find another thing to paint. No, no. I was sad about it. It looks like – in, in there's a game called Rust, and in Rust you can make signs where you just draw whatever you want on the sign. Yeah, and it looked a lot similar to how that went. You know, okay, like you're not going to get nuance out of this. Maybe even worse than in Rust. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you achieve anything by that painting too. over the posters, or if it's just like, look, we included the posters in the <laughs> painting. It's, painted. it's yeah. like when you go to a restaurant, and with the kids' meal, they give, like, they hand them a, oh my god, what's it called? Coloring crayons. sheet. A coloring sheet and crayons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they just, they ignore the lines and just draw all over the place, because that's what, you know, And if kids they're do. a good restaurant, it's an entirely paper uh, tablecloth, so you can draw over the whole table. Oh, I'm just yeah. saying, right. bring bring that back. Has a maze on it or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. Gotta have a maze. A word search. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could I could fuck with the word oh, yeah. search right now. Yeah, huh. yeah. yeah. Restaurants yeah. are so much better as a kid. Oh yeah. Oh, 100%. absolutely. Hundred percent. Also, because you didn't have to pay for it. No, you just got mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, just, your parents paid for it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, it wasn't free. You they showed were just up giving it to you, and you were given mac and cheese. Yeah, that was how it sheet. went. And a coloring sheet and some crayons. Yeah. And uh, if you didn't like the mac and cheese, you could eat the crayons. There you go. That's true. That's true. That's very true. Universally, if you don't like mac and cheese, all eat some crayons. All Rosario is good for. That's all. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, for Crayola is uh, at least nutritional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, do we have anything else to say about Tangled, the movie or the game before mm-hmm. we go to our rankings? I think I'm good. Yeah, well, let's do it. Uh, are we ranking Tangled as a good movie, good game, bad movie, bad game, or some combination in between? How about special guest Ailish Collins? What do you think? I think good movie, bad game. Um, I, I'm tempted to bring up Barbie. <laughs> do it. You can you do it. You can do it. You've been very good all episode. <laughs> Barbie as Rapunzel. <laughs> fucking kicks ass as far as Barbie movies go. Angelica Houston is Mother Gothel. I do love that. Barbie has a lot more autonomy. She also paints, which is not in the original story. I think Disney took a lot from Barbie as Rapunzel. (laughs) Disney? Steal ideas? (laughs) Heaven forfend! Uh, But she uses her paint magically to like create her own doorway and she saves the prince like on her own. Also, she has a little dragon friend. Oh, yeah. Way better than a chameleon. That's true. Um, And so... Wow, it does sound like they ripped off a lot from this. Right? Yeah. But also the game is, uh, you know, again, heavy painting, also co-op. They took a lot from Barbie as Rapunzel and I think it's better, but I do like Tangled as a ga- a movie, not so much as a game. Okay. I think girl games get less work put into them, and this was a victim of that. They definitely tend to do that. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna say good movie, marginal good game. I I did not have a bad time with this game. It like I said, it scratches that similar itch that really works for my ADHD of that. The Lego sort of easygoing collectathon. You know, it's a good game to like turn the volume off and just listen to podcasts or something. Although we should say um, Mandy Moore and Zachary Levi came back and recorded original dialogue for the game. So if you're a super fan, you can check it out for that. But yeah, I, I, I like this movie. I don't love this movie, but I do like it. I think it's important. And I think the game is, uh, you know, it's not embarrassing. Uh, just got some weird politics, I think. Uh, J-Ban, how about you? Uh, I think it's a good movie, um, very entertaining, and I think it's an okay game. Like I, like Steve said, I just I could easily just like play this for an afternoon and just be relaxed and just like just play this game as a co-op game because yeah. it's just like it. You just I miss I love co-op games. Yeah, uh, and even this game, which is not very good, but it's still entertaining as a co-op game. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd say good movie, okay game. Yeah. I think everything's already been said on it for the most part. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Ailish, for being here, just in general, in my life. I really enjoy having you around. (laughs) Yes. You're about to say something mean to me. I can see your face curling up into meanness. Gross. There it is. (laughs) There it is. (laughs) 
Uh, so uh, everybody, be sure to tune in next week. We've got an interesting one we're going to tackle. Uh, a movie that uh, anytime I bring this up, people are like, there's a game of that? Um, we're talking about 2006's The Da Vinci Code. That's right. <laughs> we are cracking the code, folks. Uh, we're watching the Tom Hanks movie, and we are playing the game. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We will see you for The Da Vinci Code next week, everybody. All right. Uh, I'm just going to whip my hair over here at the recorder and see if I can turn it on. Oh, wait. No, I'm a brunette. I can't do it. Yeah, Could, would you do the... And, yeah. yeah. And also, your hair is not sentient. It's not. It's not anymore. No, I cut it. <laughs>